Alright, so I don't know about you guys, but I am getting sick of all this history stuff. Paintings of people that have been dead for hundreds of years, maneuver plans for battles no one actually remembers, and all of these boring politics. I mean, honestly, who wants to hear all that when we could be doing stuff with laser guns and spaceships and battle robots? That's why today I will be transforming this series into the fun, action-packed, and generally speaking way cooler science fiction in metal. And I brought just the band for that. Named after an alien planet from Riddick, Helion Prime provides us with power metal that features awesome stuff like Planet of the Apes or Star Trek references, time travel, and badass cover art. And now, let's travel through the space-time continuum and start off with a song about one of the greatest movies ever made, Kong at the Gate. Hold on, I'll be right back. What? Come on! I already have a script and all. Okay, alright, sure. I am so sorry. My co-host just told me that if I lose one more word about science fiction, I would lose my job as well and be exiled from the channel. Damn fantasy nerds. Well, back to dusty old history it is. Luckily for us, Helium Prime also features some blasts from our past on their albums. Especially on 2020's Question Everything, we can find numerous references to historical scientists that broke the ground for today's technological advances. So let's take a look at one from our rather recent history. Katherine Johnson, or Madame Mercury. Granted, this is a bit of a twist from the last videos, since today's hero only died one year ago. But the events of the song happened in the past and are therefore history, so I don't want to hear any complaints. Katherine Johnson was born as Katherine Coleman on the 26th of August 1918 in West Virginia, a time and place where black people were systematically discriminated by the laws of the United States and the white population who made those laws. A sad fact that Helion Prime doesn't miss in the first verse of the song. Young Catherine was so talented in math that she skipped two years of school and graduated from West Virginia State at the age of 18 with a degree in math and French. So, like it says in the song, she knew where she belonged, and that was a graduate math program at the West Virginia University, where she enrolled as the first black woman ever in 1938. After spending some time to focus on her family life, Johnson eventually got a job at the NACA Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. Hey, we have been there not too long ago. NACA is short for National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which would later be part of the foundation of today's NASA. She started working there as a quote-unquote colored computer in 1953, and sadly, that was not the term for a flashy gaming PC, but rather a racist slur for the black, mostly female workers whose job it was to process data into usable results. Much like the digital computers introduced in 1958 with the founding of NASA. Helium Prime tells us about this in a way nicer way in the first line of the song's refrain. The West Area Computers, as mentioned in the next line, was the official name of the division of female black mathematicians that Johnson was assigned to. Once again, she was so good at her job that she was able to ignore the constructed barriers of racism and gender, and for example access all white, all male meetings and teams by simply telling them that she had done the work and she belonged. Like I said, with the installation of NASA, human computers were a thing of the past. But that didn't stop Johnson from working there as an aerospace technologist. In 1961, she calculated the trajectory and launch window of the Mercury Redstone 3 with the astronaut Ellen Shepard on board on the spacecraft Freedom 7, making him one of the first people to ever enter space. Basically all my knowledge in physics comes from the Big Bang Theory, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've gathered, by figuring out the highly complex flight path and exact time of launch, 
Johnson solved two of the most critical problems on this rocket mission. So she was very much responsible for the success of the first crewed flight of the Mercury project that was part of the United States effort to beat the Soviet Union on their way to space. Her great involvement in this Mercury mission is what gives the song its name. The Freedom 7 flight was suborbital. However, that doesn't mean it never got to space. In aerotechnics, suborbital flights are launches that intersect the atmosphere, therefore crossing its middle layer, the stratosphere, and then return to Earth before completing an entire rotation around it. Later, Johnson verified calculations made by digital computers, sometimes specifically requested by the astronauts. She played a major role in John Glenn's orbital flight, and even helped with the famous Apollo 11 moon mission that Helium Prime features in a song on their first album. She worked on numerous space flights, the space shuttle program, and plans for a mission to Mars. All in all, it's safe to say that Johnson played a great part in the United States space exploration, Fueled by a mix of understanding of and passion for science, self-esteem and a strong sense of justice. Former US President Barack Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2015, one of the highest honors of the states. A whole bunch of building complexes at scientific organizations are named after her. And she even got her own Barbie doll, although I'm not sure how much I would feel honored by that. As a matter of fact, however, even though the male, white astronauts are usually portrayed as the heroes of spaceflight, men like Alan Shepard, John Glenn and even Neil Armstrong would never have gotten their achievements without Katherine Johnson and women like her, who really deserve way more credit. If I manage to interest you in this topic, be sure to support your local bookstore and check out Hidden Figures by Margaret Lee Shetterly that deals with Johnson's story alongside those of other women in space science mainly Dorothy Vaughan and Mary Jackson. Or, if you're not much of a reader, the movie of the same title. It sure is an interesting biography that I couldn't cover in this video alone, and I recommend it to anyone interested in space exploration. In case you like science fiction and or its basis in the real world, check out more of Helium Prime's songs as well. They're really sweet. So, thanks for listening. I hope you liked the video and learned something new today. What do you think? Should I focus back on more ancient history, or did you enjoy the take on more recent events? Please, let me know with a comment down below. And if you have songs or bands that you want me to cover in the future, just do the same. See you next time, and until then, stay true.